Hi, I'm Radhika Palkar, a practicing chartered accountant, mainly working as an advisor to foreign companies with regards to managing their operations in India. I also take keen interest in associating with startups from the stage of incorporation, bookkeeping to income tax filing, as well in advising the management in cost price analysis. Thus, we act like a virtual CFO for the entities in their growth phase. I'm here today as part of the tax video series by Canara HSBC Oriental Bank of Commerce Life Insurance Company. I will, in today's video, talk about the new tax regime enacted in 2020. This is an important subject from tax saving and ITR filing point of view. An individual taxpayer opting for the new tax regime would have to forego 70 tax exemptions and deductions. These include deductions under Section 80C for maximum of Rs 1.5 lakh claimed by investing in specified financial products, Section 80D for health insurance premium paid, 80 TTA for deduction on savings account interest earned from a bank or post office, etc. Having said that, there are various tax exemptions, deductions that are still available under the new tax regime. Hence, you can enjoy the lower tax rates of the new tax regime and avail the following exemptions. Amount received on the maturity of life insurance. Exemptions on premiums paid for life insurance are not available in the new tax regime. However, the new tax regime does include exemption on the maturity amount received from the insurance provider. Employer's contribution to NPS or EPF account. The amount contributed by your employer to your NPS or EPF account will be exempted under the new tax regime. Keep in mind that employers can contribute an amount that equals 10% of employee's basic salary to the tier 1 of his or her NPS. Similarly, employers can contribute an amount that equals 12% of employee's basic salary to his or her EPF account. Interest received from EPF. The interest received from EPF account continues to be exempted from tax in the new tax regime as well. Public Provident Fund. Any interest or maturity amount received from your public provident fund is exempted from tax under the new tax regime. Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana Similarly, any interest or maturity amount received from your Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana account is exempted from tax under the new tax regime. National Pension Scheme The National Pension Scheme continues to be a useful tax-saving instrument under the new tax regime. The lump sum received at the maturity of your NPS account up to 60% of your corpus will be exempted. The amount that you use to purchase an annuity plan, 40%, is also exempt from income tax. Any partial withdrawal you make from your tier 1 NPS account will also be exempted. Interest on home loan on rented property. Interest on home loan taken out on a property that is self-occupied is not applicable for tax exemption under the new tax regime. However, the same is not true for home loan on property that is rented out. Hence, the latter is still eligible for tax exemption. Leave encashment on retirement. In several companies, an employee can opt to receive payment in exchange of his or her share of unused leaves on retirement. This is known as leave encashment and it remains exempted from tax under the new tax regime, provided it amounts to less than 3 lakhs. Gift from employer. Any form of gifts you receive from your employer remain exempted under the new tax regime, provided the value of these gifts remains under Rs 5,000. VRS amount. Monetary benefit received at the time of taking voluntary retirement is exempted from tax under the new tax regime. Monetary benefits received by an employee under the voluntary retirement scheme from his employer will remain exempt from tax for the maximum up to Rs 5 lakhs in both the new and existing tax regime. Hope this video helped you to understand the new tax regime and the exemptions that are still applicable under it. Thank you.